So ladies and gentlemen, while everyone was tuning into the Olympics on Friday, Israel decided to attack another school in Gaza. You know, they have this tendency to make these attacks when there's something else that the world may be distracted by. And a lot of people were watching the Olympics. So let's go ahead and get into the first one. There were two strikes that happened. Israel's strike on Gaza school killed 30 kids, 30 people from the health ministry. This is coming from the BBC. And you can see the damage here. Like I said, you guys, like Gaza is just, it's destroyed. Like, I, I don't know how you come back from this other than rebuilding. This is absolutely ridiculous. Israel's military has struck a school near, near uh, Deir al-Bala, excuse me, a city in central Gaza, killing at least 30 Palestinians and injuring more than 100. That is according to Hamas-run Ministry of Health. Notice how they always include that because they say Hamas run Ministry of Health because they want you to doubt, right? They want you to doubt the numbers and the casualties. The IDF said on Telegram that a Hamas command and control center was embedded inside the Khadija school. The IDF added that Hamas used the compound as a hiding place to direct and plan attacks and store weapons. Now, I want you to think about when you hear this framing, because they always say that Hamas was embedded uh, at the site that they chose to attack, but you don't hear about them attacking Hamas people. It's always these kids that were killed, civilians that were killed. And of all the attacks that Israel has done to Gaza, Hamas is still well alive. Now they claim there have been a couple here and there that they have destroyed, but for the most part, out of all the people, all they've killed all those people in Gaza and they still haven't managed to defeat Hamas because I don't think that they can defeat Hamas. So just keep that in mind. Gaza's health ministry said footage showed the victims were civilians and most of them were children. Again, Israel killing children. Think about what just happened this week. Benjamin Netanyahu was just here, just spoke to Congress. So you have that. Then on top of that, you had the Olympics. There's a lot of things that were going on, a lot of different moving pieces. So essentially they assume when something is happening and we're not paying attention, whether it's the Super Bowl, you know, whether it's uh, something in the entertainment world or whatever, this is when they tend to try to do these little sneaky attacks. It goes on to say, the BBC verified a video that shows children among the injured. So you see this? Even the BBC said that they were able to prove that kids were injured. This is an absolute disgrace what is happening there. Gaza's civil defense excuse me, civil defense service said the school was sheltering displaced people. Hamas said in the statement on telegram that the report, that the report, the school, Oh, you guys got a typo there that the, okay. Report the school was being used uh, for military purposes was false and displaced sick and wounded people, most of whom were women and children. So does everybody see the game that Israel plays now? They'll just continue to say that, oh, we got wind that Hamas was at that facility and that's why we decided to strike it. They're never required to provide any proof that Hamas was there. And all you continue to see are women and children that are dying, that are being killed because of these attacks. Nobody is making Israel verify that Hamas officials are at these locations. So they're not being held accountable. They just continue to get away with this. And they just give that excuse that, oh, we got wind that there was Hamas officials there. It's BS. Uh, witness Mustafa told the BBC the explosion shook his body and he fell from the blow. Afraid, he said he ran inside the school and saw body parts in a terrifying scene. I was shocked, he said. Verified video from the scene shows a chaotic situation with people running around a compound covered in rubble. Men carry two bloody children in their arms while a woman hugs another and a group carries an injured man on a stretcher. A body lies on the ground covered in a blanket. 
The IDF said that before the strike, it took steps to reduce the risk to civilians, including the use of appropriate munitions, aerial, aerial surveillance, and additional intelligence. We can all call BS on that. We can all call BS on that. Gaza's health ministry said 53 people had been killed and 189 injured since Saturday morning due to the IDF bombing. Now, this is the IDF bombing in Deir Abala and the southern city of Khan Yunus. We talked about Khan Yunus a couple of days ago. The strike occurred as Israel continues its month long military campaign in Gaza that has killed more than 39,000 Palestinians, according to Gaza's health ministry. So again, another attack that happened again over the weekend while people, a lot of people were paying attention to the Olympics. And that wasn't the only attack because there was another one that I'm going to show you as well. But I want to take you back to nine years ago because I want you to know this did not start with October 7th. Israel attacking schools in Gaza has been going on for years. This video here from CNN, by the way, from CNN, who all of a sudden these commentators seem to be shocked and surprised that there has been a school that has been attacked in Gaza. I want to take you back to nine years ago where they talked about just that. Nine years ago, Israel attacks a school in Gaza. Listen to this. So we have for you live now from Gaza City, Robert Turner, Turner uh, local director of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. So Robert Turner, welcome to you. you. Uh, these civilians in Gaza, they are dying in supposed safe zones, these UN safe zones. Are you talking to, or are you communicating with the, the Israelis to tell them where these safe zones are? Okay, does that sound familiar to you guys? Nine years ago on CNN, they reported that the IDF was targeting safe zones in Gaza. Notice the headline. U.S. says Israeli strike on school appalling. Everybody see this? Who was president nine years ago? So this is not new. And I like to go back to old footage just to, you know, jog your memory. And just to make it very clear to you that our government has known what Israel was doing for years. This is not new. This is why you have to push back on the October 7th rhetoric. When people come to you, when people tell you this all started on October 7th, you have to have, you know, evidence like this to push back on them, to show them that they were targeting these schools, that they were killing these damn children before October 7th. This is on YouTube. This video is on YouTube. Right on CNN. Absolutely, on a daily basis, uh, sometimes more than once. Uh, the attack yesterday in Rafa, the location of that particular shelter, had been transmitted to the Israeli forces on 33 different occasions, the last just an hour before the attack. Uh, the Jabalia attack you mentioned, that was uh, last week. That location had been transmitted 17 times, the last just the evening before the attack. They know where these buildings are. They know where these shelters are. Um, they're, they're supposed to be indicated on their maps, and they're supposed to be protected. Okay. I wanted you to hear that part as well, because did you hear what he just said? They know where these facilities are. They know where these buildings are. Compare that to the rhetoric that you hear on corporate media today when they talk about Israel attacking a school or a, a, a refugee camp, right? Or another tent, right? They're not saying, well, they know where these things are. No, they're even interviewing soldiers from the IDF and saying, how could this have happened? And the IDF soldier goes, this was a mistake. This was not intentional. Everybody see the change in the rhetoric? This gentleman said on CNN that he, they knew where the buildings were. They knew where these locations were. Now, I don't know what happened to this woman. I don't know what she does now, but everybody remember this. This is why I continue to say all this, these speeches that you hear from, whether it's Kamala Harris or Joe Biden or whoever, this is all a game. It's all theater when they stand up and they say, well, Israel has a right to defend itself, but how they do so matters. 
They have known about this for years. They have known for years that Israel was killing these damn children. And now they're trying to pretend like this is a new thing because of October 7th. It's not a damn new thing. And people need to wake up. Nine years ago, Gaza. And there was another strike that happened over the weekend as well. Now, this one involves the Golan Heights. At least 10 people were killed in a rocket attack on a football pitch, uh, soccer, for those who are not aware, in Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. Now, I will say this to Sky News. Thank you for saying occupied, because it is occupied. Let's get into this story. Now, this one as well, a little bit different. With this particular attack, Israel is blaming it on Hezbollah. Hezbollah has made a statement saying that this was not them that did this attack. But what people have to understand is they say Israeli occupied and the IDF has made the statement saying that Israelis were killed. The people that are particularly in that area, from what I understand, are Syrian. That is not supposed to be Israel's land. They are occupying it just like they're occupying other parts. Let's get into this. And we can speak to John live in Jerusalem now. John, let me start uh, with uh, focusing on this attack that we are hearing about uh, from Lebanon to uh, a town in the Golan Heights of Majdal uh, Shams, a rocket attack. Uh, we're hearing that 10 uh, people have died. What more do we know? Uh, yeah, it sounds very nasty uh, indeed. Israeli medical services reporting uh, that there are a number of casualties between the ages of 10 and 20 years old. They're reporting that nine uh, people have died, uh, perhaps as many as 11 casualties. Details just coming through at the moment. Some sort of projectile, a large projectile, hit a football pitch and a playground area in a community called Majdal Shams. It's a, a community of about 11,000 people in the north of the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights is disputed territory that's been held by the Israelis, effectively annexed by them uh, in the early 1980s. So now he said held. I'm going to change the word to occupied because it's important that area is occupied by Israel. Who's responsible? Well, the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, they have come forward. They say they have done an assessment. They have intelligence. They say the evidence is clear that Hezbollah, Hezbollah is responsible for this. Uh, this is the Iran-backed organization backed in southern uh, Lebanon. I call BS on that because number one, Hezbollah has said they were not responsible for this, and I'm more likely to believe them than I am to believe the IDF. Obviously, the IDF is notorious liars, so I'm going to tell you what I think happened. I think Israel did this attack theirself. I don't think it came from Hezbollah. We all know that Israel is, has been confirmed by Israeli networks that Israel did use the Hannibal Directive on October 7th, so it would not surprise me if they have done this yet again, if they were willing to attack their own people. That does not surprise me. What Israel is doing is that they are using this as an example, and they'll probably include more, as to push for a war with Hezbollah. And then what they are going to do, I believe they're going to ask the U.S. government for help because they know they cannot beat Hezbollah. So they would need help from the West. Now, I already told you earlier. The UK has already made a statement. Things are changing over there. The UK has made a statement that if Netanyahu sets foot in the UK, he will be arrested. The UK is also now not rebuting the ICJ ruling about the occupation. Canada has just announced they want an immediate ceasefire now. So who is Israel going to come to for help? They would come to the United States, even if that means getting our troops involved in this. That means they may be coming to get your brother, your sister, your friend, your significant other to get them to fight in their bloody holy war. And that's not cool. That's not cool at all. But the U.S. government, they have let this go on for too damn long. And I told you, I warned you that they would expand this war. And here we are. 
Israel has been attacking Lebanon for months, for months. And Hezbollah is not supposed to respond to them. They've been bombing Lebanon. They've been bombing Syria. We all know what they've been doing to the Palestinian people. Like I said, Israel is a bully on the playground and they just want to beat people up, but you're not supposed to hit them back. So here is where we, this is where we are now. And they are willing to drag you into it. Everyone needs to push back on this. The U.S. government does not need to be involved in any of Israel's wars. And that includes a war with Iran, by the way, because they wouldn't be able to beat them either. They would try to get us to go to war with them. What is J.D. Vance saying now? Go to war. We need to go against Iran. No, the fuck we don't. I don't see Iran bothering us. Maybe you need to leave Iran alone. Maybe we need to leave Israel alone. Maybe we need to separate ourselves from Israel altogether. And I called for it before. APAC needs to be removed from electoral politics. Get it out of it. Get these politicians out of Israel's back pocket and you'll probably see a difference in our foreign policy. But as long as the Israeli lobby is controlling our politicians, we're headed towards World War III. Whether it's the Middle East, whether it's Russia, whether it's China, we are headed towards World War III. Someone has to stop this. Because I don't know about you, because I don't want to be a part of this. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to be a part of this. Don't think that the U.S. is not untouchable. We cannot win against Iran. Let's go on a little bit more here. Hezbollah's media representative, very quick to come out this evening, he said that Hezbollah had absolutely nothing to do with this incident. But what we do know, multiple ra rockets were fired from Lebanon into Israel. We know that the sirens went off and we know that Israel's air defense system, its Iron Dome shield, it did not intercept these projectiles, the projectile or uh, projectiles. I can tell you that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, he has been informed. He will have an emergency meeting, we understand, this evening. And I think that we can expect a significant response, a significant response against Hezbollah from the Israelis in the coming days. So as I said before, I do not believe that Hezbollah is responsible for this. I believe this is Israel, and I believe that Israel is trying to wage a larger war in the Middle East. And honestly, if I were you guys, and I've said this on the show before, if you have friends or family members that are in the military, and I get it, listen, my family, a lot of my family members were in the military as well. They were, they're not anymore. But if I were you, tell your friends and your family members to get out of the military while they can. Because your friends and family members don't need to go fight these wars just for the, these, you know, for, for profit. This is all a money laundering scheme. And, and for what? You would have thought people learned after the war in Vietnam, but no. Like I said, there's a lot of money to be made in war. Tell your kids, do not join the military. Tell your kids not to go fight in these wars. That's my message to the world. Get out of the military while you can.